string. Pull the string. Welcome back to the third annual Stancho Ween. Please like this video right now before we get started. Tonight, we talk about who may as well be a mandatory director of any Halloween binges, a, a legend in the business, and the, the guy that brought us legit classics in the genre with films like Witchboard and its superior sequel, and the Halloween themed Night of the Demons, of course, classic. But tonight, I'm here to talk about one of Kevin Tinney's strangest films. No, no, I'm not talking about Pinocchio's Revenge, not yet. Or Bigfoot, what a weird fucking movie that was. Or The Arrival 2, a film I think is actually pretty sweet. No, no, none of those odd yet great genre pieces from Tinny. Rather, we're gonna be talking about his final horror film from the 80s, a film that was based on previous material, a film with a tumultuous production and a film he originally had nothing to do with. One of my favorite creature features as a kid that I never realized was so damn strange, Kevin Tinney's The Cellar. <laughs> Blurry. The film is based on a 1930s short story by David H. Keller, and in the story we get a family in London that notices their young son has an unwarranted fear for the family cellar. And there's something strange, there's like some strange illusions happening to the dad being afraid that the kid's gonna grow up to be, let's say, feminine. And they eventually get a therapist involved as the kid gets a little older, and it's decided that when the boy is, you know, at the right age, they're gonna lock him in the cellar to face his fears, as they're all convinced there's not really anything down there that can actually harm him, right? That's when they find his badly altered remains after some time in the cellar, as the therapist yells out, didn't you tell me there was nothing down in the cellar? I'll link the story below, but as you will see, the film adaptation has next to nothing to do with the story. The story doesn't even show or confirm the existence of a monster, Whereas the film, it kind of goes all out, and it definitely doesn't take place in London or the 1930s. It's set in Texas, but was shot in New Mexico, and there's just so much to talk about here. Now, Kevin Tinney wasn't the first director of Bob Noe, and I often wonder what would have become of The Cellar if the original director, John Woodwards, was able to finish his vision, especially when you take a glance at his other movies. One lives in a world of faith. The other lives in a world of sin. However, considering the small budget and, you know, the small crew and the breakneck shooting schedule, it was actually wise to hire John Woodward's, as he had previously made the Stephen King Dollar Baby adaptation of Children of the Corn titled Disciples of the Crow, a much better name in my opinion, and it was released in 1983, making that the first adaptation of Children of the Corn to be produced. And it's pretty cool, actually. I may review that one, too. And it seemed John Woodward's had a knack for horror and definitely had the talent to pull off the cellar. But he wound up behind schedule pretty quick. And within the first week of shooting, he was out of there. So after he was promptly let go, they went on to a proven genre director in Kevin Tinney, who got the call for the job the same day Woodward's was fired. Talk about fast-paced. And while Kinney took on the job, probably for a quick buck, you know, he also seemed interested in the film's take on the horror genre, having a kind of kid's movie feel and whatnot, and dealing with native traditions and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It really would have made for an original movie if it were done a little better. Maybe it would have at least been remembered more so than it is today, as it's really, really just kind of revered by Kevin Tinney's fans. And I'm sure he figured they could have made something very unique if they would have let him do his thing. You know, like a, a child-led horror drama or 
something like that. But to Tinny's dismay, these genres wouldn't really get the chance to mesh well, so to speak, as confusing notes from the studio and, you know, not being able to reshoot previously shot footage from Woodward's, he was basically forced to stitch it all together, you know, you know that with the up and down decision on the rating, was it rated R, is it PG-13, is it PG, what are they making here, you know? It kind of led to a strange mismatch of an 80s horror film featuring so much. I mean, we get the mystical kind of native folklore poetic stuff with the opening and closing credits, and of course, a pretty sweeping dramatic score at times, and the family take on the protagonist with the heavy leaning on the kid's point of view, and the, you know, also a prosthetic monster with some genuine throwback elements, making it one of the most underrated horror movies ever in my opinion much less the 80s and i feel that a lot of creature effects owe a huge due to the cellar monster you know some stuff we'd see later is pretty god dang similar hell and hey in the cellar we even get some explosions and the legendary patrick kilpatrick i love that guy when asked by producers about the vibe kevin was trying to go for in the cellar kevin tinney has been quoted as saying i want to make the kind of horror movie disney would make if they made horror movies. And it turns out there's a pretty good reason Disney doesn't make horror movies. His words, not mine. And you can definitely see a few versions of what could have been. A harder take on the children's horror like Cameron's Closet or even The Gate, a film I think really nailed that whole aesthetic. Or even maybe like a heavier lean on the Native American stuff. That would have been cool and really set the film apart from a lot of other stuff. But I personally find the movie to be pretty damn entertaining, mainly because of all these mixed elements. I especially love the film's flashback sequence. It, it always gave me the creeps. And the ending, too, I think is pretty satisfying. Dad! Even though, yeah, again, it has absolutely nothing to do with the source material outside of the cellar. Kevin Tinney would look back at all of this as a learning experience that he holds in high regard, even if he does not care for the film. <laughs> as the seller was the kind of crash course film school you'd only get in this particular situation. But the film would go down as a cult hit amongst his loyal fan base, and even got a proper release recently actually, and uh, it's a legit cult classic monster movie, what can I say? It needs to be held in higher regard, but I think it is also right where it needs to be. One of the strangest and last of that magical decade that was the 80s. Stay tuned this December for this year's A Very Cory Christmas, where I will be covering another Kevin Tinney schlocker, Demolition University. And be sure to stick around this month for the rest of Stauncho Weems.